You can find out more about House Bill 4 and the plans for the Independent Ethics Commission at NewMexicoInFocus.org. And while you're there, let us know what you think of that proposal. You can also weigh in on Facebook or Twitter. We've got more reaction now on that plan from transparency and good government advocates, as well as a former state lawmaker. They sat down with me to also break down some of the other important legislation making the rounds in Santa Fe this year. Joining me today to discuss the ethics proposals as we know them today, our executive director of New Mexico Ethics Watch, Kathleen Sabo. Heather Ferguson is with us. She's the executive director of Common Cause New Mexico and with us as well as former Republican state representative Jim Dines. Thank you all for being here. Representative Dines, let me start with you on this one. Um, we have got, you, since you sponsored the ethics legislation in 2016, what's your feeling about how it's playing out now? What, what's your sense of it as it stands? I think that uh, right now, the, what uh, the bill that I saw uh, is uh, very lacking in the area of transparency. I see. And that uh, the idea was that uh, the public voted three to one in favor of this resolution mm -hmm. as an amendment. And all the people I talked to, the biggest worry they had uh, was let's not just put another layer of government on uh, that is going to be holding matters secretly behind closed doors and making decisions. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, this proposal does not go far enough to, uh, let's say, quiet those concerns mm -hmm. of the public. Because what I think the re response is going to be is we just have another secret organization making decisions for us behind closed doors without public input. Mm -hmm. Is there anything in specific on uh, Representative Eli's proposal that concerns you or that you would like to see included at this point? What I would like to see included, which I've been a proponent of all along, mm -hmm. and that is when the complaint is filed and then, when, then, then the response will be filed within a certain period of time, that mm -hmm. both of those then are made public. I so that the public knows who it, uh, whoever it is uh, is having complaints lodged against them and what the response is. Along those lines, I find it very interesting that in the complaint, the complaint uh, person uh, has to uh, verify, if you will, that it's true and accurate and also have it notarized. If you look at the legislation, mm -hmm. the respondent does not. I see. And I think that's a big gap because I think basically what you can have is once they, f they, they, they file and uh, sign something, then they've said, I want to invoke this public process. And when they invoke the public process, then I think it should be open to the public at that time. Gotcha. Kathleen, your sense of HB4 and the transparency issues involved, do you have any particular concerns? Same, con same concerns that okay. Representative Dines has. Mm -hmm. uh, it took a while to get through to try to figure out what the disclosure portions of the bill actually were saying. It was very unclear and murky and convoluted. And, and I'm a a realist having worked up at the legislature that mm -hmm. this is going to go through iterations it's um, there's a process it's a complex bill mm -hmm. but uh, certainly ethics watch would have liked to have seen some stronger disclosure provisions mm -hmm. and clearer in that first mm -hmm. do you have any any sense from your organization or you about the idea that possibly frivolous charges could be somehow slipped in 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 the context of what we've got going on now with HB4 do you share that concern or is that not rising to the level of problem for well, you at this point. Well, you mean that, that we could see a, a greater occurrence of yes. frivolous charges? Exactly. Absolutely. I okay. think li letting the sunshine in not only protects, uh, it protects everyone. Mm -hmm. And so let's go ahead and do that. One thing, and you mentioned frivolous, right. we certainly advocate for, and we did a essential elements document, we certainly advocate for uh, people being penalized in some way for filing frivolous complaints. And our suggestion is, charge them the cost of the investigation, right. as we suggest for people who are also found to have committed an ethical violation. Mm -hmm. We think that's a good safeguard. Mm -hmm. Heather, pick up on that if you would as well, the idea of transparency and potential problems. What are you, what are you seeing in HB4 as it stands now? I think that there will be some cleanup language that will be, um, that there's been a lot of discussions about around the legislature ahead of getting to House Judiciary mm -hmm. um, for a few pieces that may have been missed in these drafts, but this was a very, um, collaborative effort that has been worked on since the beginning of last summer when mm -hmm. we had um, a number of organizations, the League of Women Voters, Ethics Watch, um, legislators, 
and uh, some committee drafters and former committee drafters that were participating in a subcommittee of the Courts, Corrections, and Justice Committee mm -hmm. to develop the outline pieces of what we wanted to see in this legislation. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, we didn't get to really have a, a deep discussion about some of those things. There was a lot still left on the table by the time we got to the end of the process in December. Mm -hmm. And so I think we're going to have to add some pieces in there. When it comes to the transparency pieces that are in here, um, we do think that there are some places where we're going to need to have greater transparency. Um, I agree with Representative Dines in having it be transparent when you have um, the respondent also responding to a complaint, mm -hmm. um, that that's something that should be made public. We don't want to have things just kept behind closed doors in secret squirrel. Right. Um, that's part of the process that I think has eroded the public's trust mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. and has affected their um, their desire to be a part of the political process and to go vote. Mm -hmm. Picking up on things that maybe were left undone earlier, subpoena power is obviously a big point of discussion now. Take us through that from your point of view. Is that beneficial? Is it necessary? How, how important is that having subpoena power? I look at that as one of the number one most critical issues and uh, when mm -hmm. we were working on this bill um, three years ago and two years ago with Representative Dines, that was one of our main pieces, mm -hmm. is that if this commission doesn't have teeth, it will be completely ineffective. Mm. And the subpoena power that they do have, I think, is exactly one of the things that we will hold on to with absolutely everything we have, that it has to stay in here. Mm -hmm. What we did do is the commission will be able to issue the subpoenas, but the enforcement will come from the district court if you are in contempt of a subpoena and not complying. Interesting point there. Pick up on that if you yeah, would. Thank, yeah. thank you, because mm -hmm. when you take a look at the resolution as it was passed and now the amendment, uh, one of the things that I uh, required was that, in fact, in the amendment, the commission has subpoena power. Mm -hmm. So now all we're talking about is how is that going to be implemented. So the subpoena power is there because I felt, just like Heather mentioned, that we would be there as a toothless tiger right. if we didn't have the power to compel production of documents and production of witnesses. Mm -hmm. And so it is actually in the amendment itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, if you, have, if you have a thought on subpoena power no, too we're just, as well. Yeah. just very pleased with the way mm -hmm. it, it is now in the bill. Mm -hmm. um, I want to move on to a couple of other things. We've got ethics bills in the legislature this year, starting with Senate Bill 3. He uh, sorry, Heather, we'll get to you in a second. Kathleen, um, about campaign finance, wh wh what's your sense of where this bill stands now and what does the public need to know about public finance and where we could potentially end up with this? Well, I, I'm going to turn this one to Heather right okay. now because I think she's been intimately involved in this and I'm, I'm happy to, to, to grab on. Absolutely works yeah. for me. Sure. Give a sense of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so Senate Bill 3 is the campaign finance reform that Senator Peter Wirth has been working on now since mm -hmm. 2010. Mm -hmm. And that was vetoed now twice by Governor Martinez, um, former Governor Martinez. And it is something that the Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham has promised that she would sign. It is a really critical, important piece to update our statute. We've had unconstitutional language on the books mm -hmm. since Citizens United in 2010. Mm -hmm. And then also in SB4, which is the campaign public financing program, which also required up Dates. That's been out of date since 2010 and 2011 when we had what are called matching funds um, also ruled as unconstitutional by the courts. So these are two absolutely critical bills that we needed to bring our, our statutes into compliance because right now they were both overly broad and too narrow. Mm -hmm. They had loopholes in them that you could drive a Winnebago through. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is something where now we, the public will be able to have some clarity mm -hmm. because they need to know who's trying to pay to influence their mm -hmm. vote. Representative, I'm curious as a former representative or potentially a future representative, you never know, this, this measure would also cap individual donations. Do you have a thought about that? Is, is that a, a, an appropriate way to go? Or is, that, is there a constitutional issues there that concern you? What, what's your sense of it? I, I think there are uh, constitutional mm -hmm. issues, uh, clearly, because I think part of what is being uh, brought out is that what is the constitutional right of free speech which right. should be exercised by campaign contributions mm -hmm. and so I think that would be it, it is something that could be troubling mm -hmm. and uh, I would hope that that somehow could get worked out. Mm -hmm. Your sense on that one about capping and then individual donors of course being capped as well. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. still a, a unconstitutional under Citizens United and its mm -hmm. progeny so mm -hmm. no, I, don't, I don't see that I, I don't know how that fix can happen, and maybe Heather has an idea about mm -hmm. that, but. Mm -hmm. 
Interesting point there. I do want to get to lobbying reporting. I'll start with you on this one and, and get you guys in as well. We have another bill, of course, dealing with lobbying, uh, disclosure, reporting. For starters, is a bill that would require all lobbyists to report gifts or meals donated, even if they cost less than $100. Is this just closing a loophole? Is there something bigger at, at play here? Actually, it's closing a loophole that um, when HB 105 was passed several years ago, mm -hmm. um, that was actually what was in statute before then. It was inadvertently taken out and was supposed uh, to be put back in. But the, uh, the issues when you get into campaign finance laws are that they are so deep. These are never a two-page bill, mm -hmm. and so they were missed in getting back in there. And then since then, Senator Ivy Soto actually tried to, he ran a bill and passed a bill twice, and twice had that vetoed by the governor for not wanting to put back into law mm -hmm. what was actually in the law mm -hmm. and constitutional before that. Right. So successfully, that got put on the rocket docket this year and yeah. has already been signed. That's right. It's moving along, as they say. I know the bill, um, oh, actually, do you have a thought on that one? Yes, I do. Yeah. I, I think it's so important for the lobbyists to make Make full disclosure. Okay. One of my policies uh, uh, has always been that I did not accept lobbyist money or mm -hmm. any free gifts or free meals from anyone, including lobbyists. And I think that the public needs to know from what I saw up there about the extent to which that goes. And so, therefore, I think that this 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 uh, actually uh, doing it the correct way this time is going to be a big help in that way. You know, one of the things that uh, someone mentioned to me my first year up there, they said, "Well, Jim." Why don't we uh, have the lobbyists, just like in NASCAR, wear the stickers on their jackets as to who they represent right. and uh, who are their, you know, you, you would do how much you got by the size of your sticker. And I thought it was a pretty clever idea. Yeah. Talk about transparency. I mean, that's amazing. If I may, one of the Please. issues that we had come up with, uh, the under $100 issue, is right. that if not when you have the lobbyist disclosures, when you find out but when they are trying to buy meals or, to, you know, under the law as it had been, everything will cost 99 95 and right. it'll be just right under that reporting <laughs> marker. So right. this is mis this is really important. That's right. Kathleen, in, a, in, a, in the broadest sense, you, you know, your sense about these things moving forward, are you pleased? Is the organization pleased? Or are you cautiously optimistic at this point? Um, <laughs> you know, the, so much happens sure. if, after the We're only time, halfway, for, that's time right. for bill introductions <laughs> has passed. So mm -hmm. much happens in the, in the committees, on the floor, moving to the, to the other house. Mm -hmm. Cautiously optimistic, I think, is the appropriate way to be, but, but yeah. Right. But, but Gene, I, you know, there's a, there's a disturbing trend as well and maybe you're going to get to this, but that's sort of pulling back on transparency right. in a number of ways too. And I'll, I'll leave that for when you want to- Speak to that now, well, yeah, that's, that's an interesting point. Well, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, the Albuquerque Journal had, a, had an editorial about it, right. citing a, a long list of bills that seemed to um, put things behind closed doors or charge more for things or keep the public from being able to access mm -hmm. uh, ways, uh, information in a non-burdensome way. Mm -hmm. And that's a concern. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm not, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens again. Mm -hmm. I'll be optimistic about that as well. Maybe those, maybe people will get some sense into their heads and realize pulling back on transparency is not the way we want to go. Mm -hmm. you, do you have trouble with the word secrecy versus disclosure? Do you know what I mean? There was an issue there. Some people have a, a problem with that word. It's, um, it tends to taint the conversation. Secrecy, yeah. yeah. I, I, certainly semantics are always important. And, you know, as you're drafting a bill, words are ultimately important. There you go. Exactly yeah. right. Representative, last thought from uh, you uh, th this. Thank you very much because, mm -hmm. you know, for over 20 years, I tried cases and our office tried cases and on open government. And the one thing I, I, I feel that the legislature uh, forgets at times is that that legislature passed the acts, the Inspection of Public Records and Open Meetings Act, and the presumption is openness mm -hmm. and only to have exceptions Mm -hmm. when there is that rare circumstance. Right. And now what we see and what I saw while I was up there are someone just decides, well, we just need to keep this secret. I don't have a problem using the word, frankly. Okay. Yeah. If it's not out in the public, then it's secret. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, but uh, I think that uh, what Kathleen mentioned mm -hmm. is that there is this trend and we have to be careful with what we're seeing up there because what we're being asked to do as the public is trust us, right. we know what's best, we do everything impartially and, uh, and, 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 and very carefully uh, and wisely. Well, my feeling is if you're doing it so wisely and, and, and good, uh, good intentions, then why not make that public? Good point. You don't need to keep it a secret. Good way to end this. Thank you all very much. Really appreciate your thoughts. It's confusing for some folks. Some clarity always helps. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Mm -hmm.